everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's me, CJ. You're watching. Excuse the flop era. Haven't been feeling like YouTube and lately, but I'm back and I'm here for a chatty video. First things first, I have huge major news. If you follow the channel at all, you know that I own a mobile bookstore called Sunny's Book Truck. We've been operating out of a vintage Japanese mini truck for the last year and a half. And I've always dreamed of opening a brick and mortar bookstore and it's happening. One of the main draws of moving back to my hometown in Yuma, besides all the obvious things of being closer to my family and getting more bang for your buck, was the opportunity to open an independent bookstore. Yuma doesn't have any that are thriving. There's like one scary one that reeks of cigarettes and has no good books in it. And I really believe that bookstores are such a community hub and I can't wait to offer that to Yuma. It's gonna be great. About the space, it's like 600 square feet. I get the keys on Monday, so I haven't done like a full tour or anything, but I'll try to document as much of the process as I can. It's in downtown Yuma on Main Street. It's like in this little small business aggregate corridor where there's about 10 suites and a bunch of different small businesses. There's like clothing stores, a dog store, a printing place, a little vegan bakery, and now there'll be a little tiny bookstore. So that's exciting. There's not like a ton of work to do to the space. I think we're gonna build a partition wall out of drywall of some sort so we have some kind of hidden storage situation where we can have all of the merch and the shipping supplies and that can be finally out of my house, which will be lovely. The walls are already white so there's not much painting to do, but uh, we have to figure out our shelving plan and kind of our cash wrap situation. I will put up some pretty crude drawings that I have now for my vision. Um, it's not a lot of space, but it's more than you would think. It's like probably as big as my living room, maybe bigger. I think it's bigger than my living room, but it's kind of a big square. And uh, I don't have money to invest in a bunch of custom cabinetry and shelving system so I'm going to go to Ikea next weekend and kind of see what I can suss out based on on a uh, what I like. They have some oak veneer that's kind of nice of, of some bookcases and um, some string shelving units that I think will be cool on one wall but overall the tone and the vibe is like light bright airy fun joyful community sunshine Sunny's books right? Right. That's the big news in my life. I am really scared, really excited. I'm keeping my full-time job. <laughs> so I have to figure out when I'm gonna work this and who's gonna work it. Uh, most of the hours in the small business aggregate, everyone's closed Monday, Tuesday. So I think we'll be open Wednesday through Sunday. I'm gonna be working there half days on Fridays and then Saturday and Sunday. And I think my dad is going to be in there Wednesday through Friday and man the shop for me, which is cute and great but he's not always gonna be here he travels sometimes for work so we're gonna have to figure that out i don't know i don't know we're just we're just leaping and the net will appear that's kind of the the name of the the game with me i'm just going for it we're gonna have a really busy summer doing the build out i hope to be open in august i think that is pretty ambitious of me but i think we could make it work if I'm practical about what kind of shelving and like retail display systems I employ because my stupid ass wants like something beautiful and bespoke and custom but I can't we can't do it right away okay we can just start somewhere and we can build from there so I've been doing that I've been going on Ingram and kind of calculating how much money I'm gonna need for an initial book drop because we are gonna sell new books as well thousands of dollars it's gonna be so much money I'm terrified um thinking about if I want to sell like some merchandise some goods there you know outside of Sunny's merch if I want to offer anything else puzzles book accoutrement you know what I mean so shopping shopping wholesale retailers kind of getting a vibe that's taking up all my brain space I'm gonna be honest it's the Sunny's retail build this all kind of happened last week I've been looking for a space for like two years and this this is happening now so that's my big bookstore news. House updates, house updates. Um, this is old, you've seen this. I got new credenzas for the living room and they're supposed to come here the first week of June. I'm so excited. Uh, we 
haven't done anything else in the main house, but dad's house, our guest house behind our house, 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 is making great progress finally. Our inspector drama is over. We got these like really beautiful concrete floors put in, poured in. We found someone local who had done that before. We DIY'd our um, mudroom, if anyone remembers that on the channel, and it looks okay, but it wasn't perfect and it was a lot of work and this guy had a good price per square foot and you gotta, you gotta figure out where you're gonna spend your time, you know? So we hired that out and we went for more of like a true gray concrete. I absolutely am so glad that we tested that kind of cream concrete in our mudroom because we're not going to be doing that any longer. It is filthy already and it is impossible to clean. So glad we tested that out in a small space and we're going to go more of like a true polished concrete I think in the rest of our house when we redo ours. That's really exciting and we also got our cabinet guy who made these bookshelves behind us, a carpenter, um, out here last week and he took measurements for dad's kitchenette and we got our cabinet order in for him, we got our uh, countertop order in for him, all of the appliances are in, actually that's a lie, I need to order the fridge, um, but we're like very close, very close. We are interviewing a Tyler to do the bathroom there this weekend, found him on Instagram, he looks good, and then really should be rocking and rolling. It's really like the bathroom, the cabinets being installed, which is gonna be so simple. It's like three cabinets. And then we need the outdoor stucco to be done. We're just like trying to nail down the stucco guy of when he's gonna start so we can get the mini split air conditioner installed. And then it's gonna be pretty livable. Then it's just like painting and buying a bed. And the plan still is for me and Kiki to move in there probably early fall i mean we can move in there soon but i bet we won't start on our house until like fall and start doing the renovations then um but it finally feels like something's happening so i'm at peace in my heart i think those are all the personal life updates um kiki is also starting a tattoo apprenticeship which is very exciting and cool um i'm very proud of him it's under a girl named well, I'm not going to tell you her name, but it's in Yuma. <laughs> and she's a girl who's tattooed us before. She's a great person. And he starts that in June. So we're going balls to the wall, guys. He's keeping his job too. So we're just like double jobbing, house renovationing, store build outing, chaos time. Leaping and the net will appear. Again, I'm going to say it again. Recent reads. Let's talk about books now. I feel like I never do monthly wrap ups on this channel anymore. Uh, they just don't speak to me at all. So maybe I'm just gonna do them in sit down videos now. I read a nonfiction collection called Monsters, A Fan Dilemma by Claire Dieterer. Um, it's about feminism and how we grapple with loving problematic artists in the wake of me too, and in this current time period of experiencing art. I liked reading this book, but I liked listening to the interview with Jalen and Claire more than I liked reading this book. <laughs> it was interesting. It paired kind of like personal relationships that she had to like Polanski and Hemingway and Picasso and kind of her own personal relationship with these more monstrous artists but also looked at it kind of from I guess a cultural perspective too and kind of a more macro lens um yeah kind of audience relationships with artists from uh Woody Allen to Michael Jackson and a bunch of other people I don't know if I came away feeling anything except for it is a complicated, murky relationship and I like that she didn't have a moralistic view either way. It kind of called it as it is that it is an impossible, seemingly impossible task to parse those things apart from each other. Those things being the art and the artist. I have many uh, controversial, monstrous, artists whose work have deeply impacted me and I'm sure that's the same for almost everyone alive. 
and I think she provided some tools of how to think through that a little bit. I also like the section on here on female monstrosities and the view of others, mothers as artists and kind of abandonment of the family unit. I thought that was one of the more interesting sections of the book. It was good. I feel neutral about it. And I read Monstrilio by Gerardo Samano Cordova. This is out by um, Zando Press, who's a cool publisher. I like they're doing weird, fun things. I like keeping an eye on them. Um, this follows a grieving family and the mother takes her dead son's body and carves into him and takes a piece of a lung because he died from lung problems. He only had one lung. He had a lot of trouble breathing when he was little and she feeds the lung and it turns into a living creature which becomes part of their family. Magical realism, fantasy bent, queer, family dynamics. Not, I wouldn't say this is a horror book. It's blurbed as being a horror book, but there was nothing really horrific about it at all. It's told in four parts, each chapter having a different main narrator. Um, the mother, the father, the, f the friend. There's like a, a close family friend in this narrative. Um, and then the monster himself who turns into someone named M. This book was very readable. It was very enjoyable. I don't think it was the best writing that I've ever read. <laughs> um, but I did like this kind of take on transformation and, and different ways to love people despite what form they're currently taking. Um, I would say the most interesting chapter to me was probably the one focused on the family friend. She's a doctor who is a lesbian and she's in love with the mother. So that kind of like longing, obsessive relationship that was portrayed in them and kind of the control that she had over her through like a lens of love was interesting to me. I'd recommend it overall. Get it from your library. A book I DNF'd in April is Gone to the Wolves. I was excited to read this. I actually picked it from my works book club, Gone to the Wolves by John Ray. Um, it follows a heavy metal band in the 80s and 90s set in Florida and it's kind of like these outcast kids coming together to form a band I think in relationships. I got like 50 pages in. Terrible dialogue writing. Um, very corny. Could not handle it. I couldn't handle it. It was like outcast queer kids in a time of friendship and in their adolescence and the writing and their dialogue with one another was like unbearably corny. Uh, I had to put it down. I was excited though. I think it could have been rompy. I was like hoping for like a Burnham Wood kind of sprawling big cast narrative, but I did not get that. And then in April, I read Simple Passion by Annie Erno. I feel like I don't understand the Annie or no buzz. Is this the one I should have started with? Did I just not read it in a time and a place that was right for me? Um, the writing is giving Cusk, it's giving Deborah Levy, it's giving Maggie Nelson, it's, it's giving all of the uh, great feminist writers who are currently alive, honestly. I think the prose was excellent. This narrative was about being like, in an affair and being really down bad for a man and I just found it kind of boring. I like tales about obsession um, and I liked how ruthless this was and honest about how obsessed the narrator was with this person but it wasn't enough to kind of like keep me invested in anything. It's also an incredibly short book. It's like 67 pages but I don't know. Not my favorite. I know Alex loved this book. I think Julie loved this book. I'm definitely interested in reading more Annie Erno because I did really like the writing, but I don't think like being obsessed with a man was particularly the right segue into her for me. Okay, so that's everything I read in April. I'm reading a couple things right now. One, The Unwritten Book by Samantha Hunt. That's the Sunny's Book Club pick. It is so weird, so beautiful. I love her. I'm not going to talk about it more because I'm going to do a whole book club on it, but if you haven't read it, 
and you didn't sign up for the book club, I still highly recommend you do. Putting memoir on its head and kind of this idea of a ghost story in a really interesting way. Hi. My big girl camera died and it's not working now and I don't, I don't know. So we're finishing out on my phone. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Um, okay. Those were, do you like my stickers by the way? Very good, right? This one says butterflies are cool. We just ended by talking about what I'm reading right now and I think we'll end it with current favorites. Is that corny? Probably. It's gonna be okay. First up, Stablio, Stablio? Highlighters. I love these highlighters so much. I found them at like a little stationery store in LA and they've changed my life. I have them in purple, pink, green, and blue, all like nice pastel hues. They're chunky. They feel so good in your hand. They seemingly don't dry out and the hand feel is really what sold me. Nice thick highlighting line, like perfect for highlighting books. I just love them. If you are looking for a highlighter, I really recommend them. <laughs> Next favorite I am currently wearing, cool angle, New Balance 574s. I love a New Balance 574. I have a yellow pair that I wear all the time. I got them used on Poshmark years ago and I wanted something a little bit more neutral. So I picked these up also when I was in LA and I've been wearing them, been wearing them. They're like a taupey gray with like cream and black accents. They're so comfortable. They go with everything. I really want like a Kelly green pair next, but I need to calm down a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if I need three pairs of the same shoe. You know what I mean? But if you need a new sneaker, highly recommend a New Balance 574. Cool ankle. Um, I also would like to recommend Ceremonia hair care. I have pretty fine hair, but I have a lot of it. It's not the thickest hair in the world, but I have a lot of it. And I feel like that is a really hard hair type to get a shampoo for. My hair is wavy. I just brushed it, so it's not looking very wavy today, but it's wavy on the edge of curly, I would say. And they have the best lightweight shampoo that doesn't weigh down your hair, but it still feels pretty healthy and moisturized. And I think I'm gonna repurchase. I feel like that's so rare with hair care. I'm such a promiscuous lad when it comes to it. I am not a brand loyalist by any means, but I'm gonna repurchase, which it, it, it means a lot to me. And then lastly, I would like to recommend Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> um, I am not the best video game player, okay? But I am an enthusiastic one and I like being involved in cultural moments. I played Zelda growing up. I played Breath of the Wild. I didn't complete Breath of the Wild, but I did play it. And this new Zelda extension is so fun. You craft a lot, you're building things. I just got out of the demo island and I'm in Hyrule now, kind of going to the first village to the Northwest. I forget which village it's called, but uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard for me. Kiki was roasting me yesterday that I was still in the demo island and I've been playing for like four days. I don't play a lot, like an hour a day maybe. Um, yeah. Yesterday I played a long time. I don't play it that much. I'm bad at it. It's hard. It's really fun though. And I like that all of my friends are playing it at the same time. It's bringing people together. Okay, that's it. Um, it's gonna be a busy summer. I don't know how much I'll be here, but thank you for keeping up with me. Thanks for the support on Sunnies. Thank you for anything else. We just launched a new cup, buy it. <laughs> buy the new cup, um, mug, it's a mug, not a cup. Also launching a new shirt that has a dragon on it this summer, so you can look forward to that too. Okay. Love you. Bye.